Bye. Bye. You get bottom, bottom left, bottom left. All right, ready? Yeah. We're good. <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry, I really am. That's annoying. That no, it's not. not annoying at all. All righty. Welcome back to the Son of a Boy Dad podcast. <laughs> Today it is April 15th, tax day. It is noon. The Ides of April. The Ides of April. We are here from HQ3. And Francis's thighs are looking juicy. I have lost a lot of weight. I was going to say they're actually not looking that juicy. I'm really? not well. What's, what's wrong? Something's happened to me. Your hamstrings look bulbous. What do you mean? I think you just haven't been in the gym as much. I just, I don't know. Something happened and all. I, I went on a scale for the first time this weekend in like probably five months. And I was like, no fucking way. In a bad way? And then I found another scale and I was like, Dear God, <laughs> I'm down like 15 pounds. Most people would be overjoyed about that. I didn't have, I didn't really have like weight, weight to lose. I wasn't trying to lose weight. Yeah, you just lost. Muscle. I was healthy before, and now I think I'm really because you're just Ill. eating fucking bird food all day. <laughs> no wonder you're losing weight if you're just eating grain bowls for He's, every meal. Everywhere we go, we get grain bowls. No, we grain don't bowls. get grain bowls. He you gets get grain burger. bowls. He eats a fucking cheeseburger. Yeah. And just, then he's like, I man, I'm so The tired. most common food on earth. You That's gotta find a way to lunch. deep fry your lettuce. You need to find a way. Or yeah. else he won't let you hear the end of it. <laughs> no, you gotta I don't, beer batter your arugula. I don't like to eat fried food anymore because it gives me a tummy wummy, but I don't eat grain bowls. If You know that if it's cooked on the grill top with like fucking grease or whatever, it's basically the same thing for your tummy wummy. Not for me. Yeah. I, mean, I can it, slam burgers and not be sick. A cheeseburger at lunch is not the type of thing that's going to give you your best results. I can tell you that it much. It is. I know my body and I know it gives it the best results. He yeah, said it's the single thing that his body breaks down the easiest. Unleaded. It's pure it 93 unleaded. It truly a is. A cheeseburger. Think yeah. of it. That's diesel fuel for the Fig- body. Yeah. Fig- <laughs> <what's in that? laughs> he purrs like a Mercedes with that bitch in, in If I have a chicken stomach. sandwich or if I have like chicken tenders or... I don't know, pasta, it's fucking curtains for the rest of the day. Yeah, apparently he gets diarrhea from everything other than cheeseburgers. I don't eat a lot of cheeseburgers. I eat them when I'm on the road. You're like Warren Buffett. Doesn't he eat McDonald's like every day? Every morning. Every morning or something I don't eat McDonald's ever. But I'm saying like he has put his body to a state of consistently putting in the same shit, even though it's shit. Yes. His body runs off of that because it's what it's used to. Yes, Mm -hmm. that's me. Mm -hmm. It's not good, but it's good for you. If I have a Caesar salad, it's going to be explosive. (laughs) Yeah. Probably because it's the first introduction of fiber to your diet in (laughs) years. Yeah, probably. Actually, I made a great taco soup this weekend. The wow. fuck? That was really good. You made it? Yeah, from scratch. Wow. Where? Yeah, it was awesome. My apartment. What? Yeah. I don't even think you have the space to make taco soup at your apartment. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of leftovers. <laughs> Just stacking it on top of like yeah. old prime bottles. Yeah, pretty much. Guy loves prime. How'd yeah. it turn out? Was there tortillas in it? No, I, I skipped out on the tortillas, the tortillas, but um Great. It was super good. The secret the secret ingredient is uh is uh Love. ranch oh. ranch seasoning. Yum. Super good. Damn. Shit was flames. It sounds flames. High sounds like the type of thing that could really get me back to health. It is. High protein, low carb. Mm, what protein is there? The meat. Oh, there's meat in that taco what, soup. What'd you put in that taco soup? Ground beef. Ground beef. Ground beef. Ground beef GB. Yeah. Cheeseburger. Mm-hmm. Why don't you have us over for a fucking <laughs> deconstructed cheeseburger? <laughs> I just ordered a couple of Big Macs from McDonald's and just crushed them up. <laughs> Threw them in. Blended them. <laughs> Dude, that's literally uh, how Wendy's used to... soup. <laughs> <laughs> and threw taco seasoning on top. That's how Wendy's used to make their chili. <laughs> like, you would find a half-ripped-up hamburger in their chili. It was fucking disgusting. I will like, say, I was eating it, and I was like, this is just wet chili. That's all this is? Yeah. This is just chili with broth. Mm. But it was great. That's why you need a tortilla with it. Yeah. A tortilla chip. Felt good. I was felt healthy. We need I'm, to get you fucking plumped up again, Francis. I know. Well, I don't know. What I kind of like the lean look. You it, look good. I, yeah, if I uh, if I were to get a haircut right now, you guys would be put off. Why? Why? 
because of how gaunt I would look. The only reason I don't look more gaunt is because of my hair being so long. Really? It's the longest my hair's been since high school. It is pretty long. Yeah, you would like that, wouldn't you, you fucking bitch? <laughs> grow that shit. Grow that shit out to high school length. I want to see the touching shoulder. Yeah. I want to see it with a nice. It's time. It's time to let myself go. I had what? A, I had an insane week. I know you've got a fun story. I do. Do you want to start with that? Sure. Okay, um, fine. I figured you'd say no. <laughs> Well, I'd, I'd, I'd like to get it out of the way so that I don't have anything else to say. Well, it's fresh. Um, so last night I was at the stand. and uh, oh, you go and I might there need your help on this. So you know Dan Carney, right? Comedian, you know him? Dan Carney, my, one of my favorites. The you, greatest. You know I was watching a Dan Carney clip recently. I like Like his sketches and stuff? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So probably hilarious. like 260, 265, but good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's and, right there. And you know, uh, Sha- do you know Sean Malaya? No, I don't know Sean you, Malaya. You Who, don't? Who's he? He's a younger comic. He's like 400, 410. Four, four, He's a younger comic, and he looks exactly like Dan Carney. Like, okay. exactly Blonde like him. Blonde hair, long. Long hair, same face, yeah, yeah. everything. So I was at this – and so Dan Carney all week has been uh, – he's been, he's been tweeting about his diarrhea. What kind of stuff was he tweeting? He's got, like, crazy food poisoning or some shit. His whole Twitter timeline for the last, like, week has been just, I'm the diarrhea. Like, even today, I woke up, he's tweeting more about diarrhea. And uh, so I got off stage at the stand last night, and I went over to the bar to say goodbye to John, the bartender. And he was talking to Sean Malaya, who I thought was Dan Carney. And I walked up to him, and I patted him on the back, and I said, how's the diarrhea? (laughs) (laughs) And he turned and looked at me, and he was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, dude. And then I went... Dude, you're talking about it constantly. You can't expect nobody to ask you about it. <laughs> you still thought it was him. Dude, I thought it was him the entire – we talked for like 15 minutes. <laughs> and and he was like super like stand – and I was like, oh, I guess he doesn't want to talk about it. And then uh, – and then and – then, and then he just like changed the topic. He was like, anyways, what's new with you? And, and it was like – it was like – uncomfortable but i was like oh, i guess he doesn't want to talk about it and all then right I, weirdo yeah Fucking and then i left and then as soon as i got home i opened instagram and he dm'd me and he was like i think i just realized you thought i was dan carney that entire time <laughs> <laughs> and oh, i was no. like and he was like i had no idea what you were talking about with the diarrhea thing <laughs> oh my god and, and then i was just playing it through my head the fact like the fact that i was like yeah, dude, you got to fucking talk about it if you're going to be posting about it constantly. And he was just like, what are you fucking talking about, dude? You interrogating him into it, finally admit it. You got a admitting false confession had, out yeah. of him. Dude, he was literally like, the diarrhea is fine. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? Tell me about your fucking diarrhea, dude. Don't fucking play games with me. I know. But he did say he was like, he was like, I realized halfway through the conversation. And I thought it would be better to tell you afterwards than while we were still talking. Wow. Yeah. Why wouldn't he just tell you right away? I don't know. Probably would have been uncomfortable. I don't have that level of poise. What do you mean? You know, people on this earth who can kind of realize that something is happening in real time and then hold their the natural response for the sake of – because they can see the future better. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. For example, I once got entrapped by a, a buddy of mine. What do you mean? He, he, I lied to him and he was like, is that true? And I said, yeah. And it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. But then he was like, okay, cool. I'm going to go double check oh, on that. Oh, he dangled it oh, and shit. fucking, uh. And then he went up and got confirmation of what the truth actually was. And then he came back down and he was like, so wait, just remind me again. <laughs> what was and the I, lie? Is that true? We were at a buddy's house and his parents were home and they said we could drink in high school but all they just didn't want us to play beer pong because it made a mess and i started setting up beer pong cups and it wasn't his house it wasn't his house it was our other friend's house and i started setting up beer pong cups and he was like didn't we get told not to do that and i was like no 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 i asked and it was okay because i was like they're never going to come down i'll clean it up whatever well and then he was like oh is it really that you asked and i was like yeah yeah he's like oh okay cool great and then he went up and asked the parents and they were like no then he came back down and he was like, just just really quick, you said you said they said yeah, right? Like Yeah, but he's a conniving snitch though. That's yeah, right. That's crazy. Yeah, but what that's, a fucking loser. But that's my that's just, just an illustration to me of people who can play the long game with their revenge. Yeah, but that's such shitty re- that's not good revenge. No, though. it's not good revenge. That's terrible. But, but you, revenge. when you when you make people hang themselves. Yeah, yeah give them the rope. That's to hang an themselves. incredible level of What'd patience. What did you say? You said what? Yeah. 
I've never been able to do that. As soon as someone wrongs me, I'm like, hey, I don't like that and I don't like you. Shame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Instead of waiting and being like, oh, that's fine. Mm-hmm. And then plotting. Yeah. I don't have that. You were messing with the devil. That yeah. was a, but like a goody two shoes devil. Do you know who the best example of this ever was? Was uh, Peter Thiel. Who's that? Billionaire, venture capitalist, angel investor who bought into Facebook. Bought like a third of Facebook. He was the first investor in Facebook. They go to him in the movie. In bathrobes. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember. I don't remember that part. It was like the fuck you. They like, he's like, make sure you go in 15 minutes late. They walk in in like pajama pants and bathrobes. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, I remember he that. He tells them to do that. I think yeah. Peter Thiel does. But Peter Thiel gets it with them and he buys like a third of Facebook for, I don't know, $5 million. I don't know what it was. I mean, he's worth he's worth billions now. And he uh, is an openly, he's a, he's a gay man who. Pause. Yeah, but I think he was like it wasn't public. You know, maybe he was out to his friends and family, right? But he was it was not known, and he's very private about his private life. And Gawker outed him mm. as being gay. Yeah, and I think it was because they didn't like his politics. Now I may be barking up a wrong tree. I'm sorry if I'm telling tales. Out no, of no, Gawker here. is Gawker is like Deadspin, and they're the people that fucked over Hulk Hogan. So that's where this goes. Okay, so. uh Rather than Peter Thiel, the, he waited like 10 years, a decade, for the right moment. And then I'm pretty sure that when Hulk Hogan's sex tape was released by Gawker, Peter Thiel funded the legal effort for Hulk Hogan's legal team, which is what bankrupted Gawker and shut them down. Mm. And got his revenge. Some cold-ass he, revenge. He waited that long. He waited for the right moment to do the most damage. Damn. That's what Drake should have waited uh, to put out the diss track until like 10 years from now. Right, uh, Push same with Ross. <laughs> yeah. Ross kind of jumped the gun there. Ross should have waited. Yeah. Striking while the iron's hot? Not it. Waiting 10 years to bankrupt a morally bankrupt internet company? That's the hot shit. It. Yeah, are any it. of these diss tracks real, though? They're all. Are, Why, yeah, how come they're, they're all real. coming out on like random Twitter pages instead of like Spotify or something? I think it's because they don't want to pay for the beats. Ah, uh, what? I think it's come on, I, Drake. Or I don't know. Or maybe they're just testing the water. Got nominated for a Grammy, but I think that there's True. like un, un back to back. Wasn't there? Isn't there like a sample? Wasn't there a sample on the first one of like another diss track? And maybe he didn't want to clear that he couldn't clear the sample fast enough for or what is like new that? one or back to back? Then the new one. Oh, I don't know. I didn't even listen to the new one because I, everyone was saying it was AI. <laughs> It's no, then incredible. they finally they don't, now it's out. It's out. It's called push up. It's push, push up. So good. Should the we best diss track react? of all time is the Pusha T Drake diss track. You are hiding a child. Let that boy come home. <laughs> that well, that was really good. And <laughs> Have I you think ever heard that, that one. Well, I know that's how that came out. Yeah, I think that Drake realized how how impactfully everyone came at him and in, in that instance the push a t-shirt and so he went so fucking hard in this one well i heard he goes after everyone but i heard he barely even goes after like kendrick it's mostly like i, I, Rick Ross I thought it was and, i thought it like was fucking Metro incredible Boomin. i thought he went after everybody he went after Ken, fucking he weekend. goes after kendrick kendrick he, call, he keeps on calling him like a midget really? says you wear a size seven how are you gonna walk like that when you wear a size seven shoe or something like that damn yeah it's fucking talking about you get your tiny ass up and do some push-ups or whatever he's fucking damn now drop a bit give me 50. i brought my first pair of converse because of kendrick i will say <laughs> wore them that, in a music video that's hip-hop as hell yeah back in the day this type of a beef would lead to people Death. being killed yeah and do we feel like that's where this is headed not a chance no, now they're really, talking about like chipping really... nails and uh, plastic surgeries. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I also don't think you can kill A-list celebrities like that anymore. Like what, someone's going to murder Drake? That would be the crazy, that would be like a president getting assassinated. It would be mm-hmm. bigger. Yeah. That would be like if Kendrick Lamar just killed Drake. <laughs> That'd I mean, be way bigger than Biden died. I'd be, I'd be so yeah. sad. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'd be so <laughs> bummed out if Drake were killed. Yeah, I also don't think it, it has like the same like street cred. Like, like I don't think that would make Kendrick Lamar more popular. I think everyone would be like, "Dude, what the fuck? Why did you do that? <laughs> Why would you do? Why that? did you murder we were, Drake? We were exchanging art. <laughs> he made good stuff, man. He had a lot of time left. <laughs> yeah, that's so bad. That would be nuts. That yeah, we can't kill for rap anymore. I did listen to uh, 
Tupac's diss against Biggie. Hit him up. Hit him up. Love that one. Yeah, hit him up is pretty great. What does he say? He says, uh, you claim to be a player, but I fucked your wife. <laughs> <laughs> That's good shit. That is good shit. That's mean. Yeah. That's why people were getting killed. That's why people were getting killed, yeah. Because <laughs> people were saying shit like that. Right. Now it's like, shut your hoe ass up and make some drums. Yeah. You're ugly. Yeah. You're fat. Yeah. You, you have fucking, you had uh, no, no surgery. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you had no surgery. It's hilarious. Who were they saying? They said Drake had no surgery, right? Rick Ross was saying that he had no yeah. surgery and like a maybe a tummy tuck. <laughs> the tummy tuck. I could see Drake having a tummy tuck for sure. And that, so he said that's why you Absolutely. wear that some goofy shit on stage. He's got a good stage. body. But Drake didn't how. always have a good body. Come on, man. He's no. got a good body. He for a while he was the guy you never see without the shirt pot with the shirt popped. Which ever. I think makes him goatish yeah. and relatable. If you're a rapper and you're jacked, you're keeping the shirt off. When Gucci Man got out of prison, you were never seeing him with a shirt on ever. Yeah, but the other so there's <laughs> two options. You could be Rick Ross, fat as fuck, yeah. and have your shirt off. Yeah. Or you can be jacked and like LL Cool J and have your shirt off. But yeah, if but you're you like can't flabby, be, yeah, you can't be Drake and be like skinny fat and be walking around with a shirt off. That's what I mean. But I think that it's nice. I think that it's nice that he was like relatable and a little flabby. That's why he got the tummy tuck though. Yeah. He, I, I bet he absolutely – or he did steroids, one of the two. Well, if he's not doing steroids, he's not trying. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Feidelberg, Smitty, and fucking Hank are doing steroids. Is Feidelberg doing steroids? I don't know. That would explain a lot of things. <laughs> Feidelberg is jacked as hell, and he's like, yeah, sometimes I just picked up pick up my 30-pound dumbbells in my apartment. That's what you said to me. Yeah, it's Dave, like, dude, Dave, no. We were at the mini golf thing, and Dave was just looking around, and he saw Feidelberg, and he goes, is Feidelberg on steroids? <laughs> Straight up said that. <laughs> well, it's like, dude, he claims he's like, yeah, sometimes when I'm bored, I'll just like do a couple curls. curls. It's like, That's dude, what he your says. arms are like this big. And they're you getting get, bigger. Yeah, they're they getting don't get bigger. that big from just occasionally doing a curl here and there. I'm going to have to see his balls up close. Yeah, me too. I'm going to have to taste his balls. <laughs> I'm going to have to see the mouthfeel of his sack. Yeah, taste the trend leaking out of him. I mean, look at me. If I don't, If I don't work out constantly and eat, a lot of food. I look like I have fucking rickets or something. It's the goddamn travel that's taking it out yeah, of you, dude. I think it's the long sleeve shirt, to be honest. No, if you saw me without a shirt on, you'd be troubled, right? The now. Long sleeve shirts make everyone look skinnier. Don't take this away from me. This is I'm just thing saying that I, that's new for me. I'm, I'm just skinny. saying. I got. I lost a lot of weight. Do you yeah. like it? Are you like? Are you? Gonna I don't be, know. It's going to be cool for the summer. I'm curious. I'm kind of. This is like a new flirtation. Skinny. So, I mean, being tall and skinny is like uh, it's in right now. We just show up for the yeah for the snatch. I think the I think <laughs> I've been watching Oppenheimer a lot, and he's thin. That's what I like. I like how thin he is, and I like that his friend keeps saying eat something. And so there's a part of me that that's good attention takes the note from Oppenheimer to not eat. Because I'm so focused on saving the world or something. Having Italian grandmothers flocking to you like pigeons, being like, you need to eat some meatballs. Like, fuck yeah. 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 Have something. You're too thin. There's that Blue Zones doc we talked about where they have that Japanese saying that says eight out of ten right before they eat. Yes, yes. Which means we're going to eat until we're 80% full. Have you been subscribing to that? I'm going two out of ten. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Mook was, I was talking to Mook last night and he's saying that he's got a wedding this weekend and he's trying to lose five pounds this week. <laughs> he said he's getting fitted for a tux today and he's like, I'm trying to lose five to ten pounds. Ten? Yeah. <laughs> ten? But then we were like, what do you – I was like, I was like, oh, you should just not drink for a week. I was like, you would lose a ton of weight. Just lick the fucking subway floor. Yeah, yeah. Honestly. Just get sick of shit. Yeah, that's the that's the best way to look gaunt and thin. Yeah, what well, he said he said he's not going to stop drinking, and he's and I said you should try intermittent fasting because that helps. And he said he's not doing that either. If he so actually I was like, wants, so to, you're not going to lose. He's going to gain five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, the only way to lose five to ten pounds in a full, in a week is to do a, like a water cleanse. Yeah, you're yeah. just drinking water. That's it. Yeah, I mean, I think you could get like a cal like if you're eating like twelve hundred calories a day or something and walking like fucking. You know, ten or five miles a day or some shit like that. You could maybe chip away at it, but it's not going to be a good look. No, it's, it's not going to be, be sickly five pounds. Sickly five pounds. You'll you'll maintain the flat. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be the five pounds that you actually needed. <laughs> yeah. Who's that UFC fighter that was a Marine? I think He's Goggins. Been... No. Um, he fought in the UFC for a bit. There, he's been on Rogan a bunch. Uh, Very conservative. Zach Bryan. 
Jocko? No. No, I forget it. Sorry. Who? 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 I can't remember. I can't remember his name. That's what, what was, was your uh, What was your story? I don't know UFC guys. I fucking wish I did. Well, he did, he did a right water now. cleanse. He did the thing where he was like, I'm on day four of a fast. I'm just drinking water. I'm not eating anything. And he's like, I feel great. And it, uh, this guy does these types of things. He also, cr- do you remember Christopher Hitchens, the essayist? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, he's an atheist. Atheist, yeah, brilliant yeah. atheist. And he died, I think, of... Anyway. Um, he's he... just nowhere right now. <laughs> he's in neither heaven nor hell right, right. now. <laughs> he uh, he was trying to make the point back after 9-11 when people were saying that waterboarding might not be torture. It's not torture. It's yes. enhanced interrogation technique or whatever. Yeah. So he got himself waterboarded. I know exactly who you're talking about now. Yeah. I know exactly. Who, I've watched that video and that guy's fucking nuts. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. So and wait, that really? video pissed me off. So it's like, dude, let me get us there because yeah, we're yeah, not yeah, there yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm glad you know this yeah. though. Christopher Hitchens got himself waterboarded and he could handle it for like 30 seconds. And then he came out of it sputtering and blubbering. And he was like, that's definitely fucking torture. And, uh, People are like, wow, you put your money where your mouth is. And then years later, this UFC guy, this Marine who's insane, did the same thing <laughs> and was like, it's not that bad. And it's actually kind of nice. It cleared out my sinuses. Like <laughs> I had a gentle water stream running from nose to mouth. And, you know, as long as you're relaxed, it's fine. Yeah, and I'm sure that they- uh prioritize you being relaxed in guantanamo yeah to see him doing that and to see him doing the water fast it's like dude nothing that you do is a frame of reference for real people yeah you voluntarily learned the sport of mixed martial arts and you enter an octagon willingly like that's not that the type of person who does that is not going to be able to say how I'll feel about being waterboarded or yeah. your training is a 20 eating. mile run and getting like hit in your, your midsection with a bamboo stick for yeah, 20 exactly. minutes. Exactly. Like, you know, do you, do you remember this video? Yeah. Well, it's also like waterboarding. The only, the, the reason that it's torture is because the terrorists think they're going to die. You're not, you're not ever going to get that same experience unless you're legitimately getting waterboarded and not getting waterboarded by like your producer for your video. Yeah. They're not like, (laughs) they're not going into it being like, all right, if at any point this is too much, put your thumb up and we will stop. Yeah. Are you ready? Relax. Relax. You're almost done. (laughs) You understand the signal, right? Yeah. Yeah. Your, your producer is not going to go to the point where you think you're going to (laughs) die. So it's like there's never going to be an actual study on waterboarding unless you are legitimately a terrorist who gets captured by the government and gets waterboarded. Instead, it's like a six foot four Oklahoma dude who's 230 pounds and has a dangerous amount of testosterone and hates his dad. Yeah. Like it's an angry motherfucker that's doing this to you. Yeah. I got waterboarded on the yak. And it's like, yeah, you just, you know, I knew whoever did it to me was not going to kill me. So I just held my breath. Yeah. And also, they probably didn't do it like full. Mm. The, the the scary part about waterboarding is not <laughs> that you can't did, breathe; it's that you're drowning. Yeah. So like the water is coming in through your nose and your mouth because you try to breathe and you can't. I wonder how the fuck they figured it out. They must have been trying to kill someone. Have you ever seen the report with Adam Driver? Yeah, that's a great movie. Yeah. Very dialogue heavy, but it's good. Yeah, that's what they talk about that like the entire time. It's like what it's about. The heroic congresswoman of that was Diane Feinstein or the senator, right? Yeah, yeah. You said heroic. I think you meant <clears throat> Jewish. <laughs> congresswoman. <laughs> but that's like they like they, they they narrow it down and they're like, we've waterboarded like two thousand prisoners and we have not gotten one actual answer out of any of them. Yeah. And they're like, just keep going, it's gonna work. <laughs> it's like that meme where it's like you're right at the edge of the diamond. Yeah, and yeah. You walk back. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's because they, they say they're like they're like the only answers that we're getting are lies. They're lies from people who will have nothing to say, and they're like, I'll say anything to get out of this position. They're at the verge yeah. of death. Yeah. Dude, I would tell the truth so fast. Yeah. I would rat you guys out. I would not have... If someone put a fucking washcloth over my face, and they were wearing a balaclava, and I'm in a dark room with you know Metallica playing on yeah. high blast in my underpants, right? 
and they it's just, a wrap. They're like, you wouldn't even have to turn on the Metallica or get me down to my underpants. <laughs> I'd be squawking right away. I wouldn't. You wouldn't have, get me to Cuba. I would have told. The Metallica one. I was like, I think I could power through. <laughs> I think I'd be able to fall asleep. I would be on such good terms with my captors that I would actually get to enjoy the private jet ride down to Guantanamo. <laughs> You're like, you guys don't need to blindfold me. Trust me. We're cool. You think any terrorists were like pretty funny? <laughs> like <laughs> like crack jokes with their captors? Probably not. <laughs> there had to have been a couple of them that were like not that <laughs> The worst one. Not the wor- indoctrinated. The worst enhanced interrogation method had to have been the the one that I was like, I don't think I could survive that was one where they, they make them stand up. Oh yeah, you couldn't do that. Well, no, it's like they they get like their arms like chained up, and they can't, and they have to like sleep standing. Yeah, and then they play the loud music and have the flashing yeah. lights all the time. Yeah, that, that's, that's brutal. I yeah. would hate. But that. don't can't people actually die from that from sleep <coughs> deprivation? Yeah, probably. I had a cricket chirping outside my window throughout the night one time a couple of years ago, and I almost oh, they, went to the government. And was like, <laughs> I don't want to be an American. Anymore. I could see you mowing someone down on the way to like Starbucks the next morning. Yeah, I could see you just one, driving through someone. One night of disrupted <laughs> sleep from a, a grasshopper, and I, yeah, and those I was are ready brutal. to forsake my nation. <laughs> the subtle noises are the worst. Yeah, I've had that a couple times where I've convinced myself that I heard a beeping in my apartment. And that's it's just, just not. Weird. It's just not there. Yeah, that's just weak of mind. Yeah, it is. You need to toughen the fuck up. Like, what was the dude's name? Tim Hitchings, the fighter. Tim Kennedy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tim Kennedy. Did you guys Tim watch Kennedy. the UFC fights? I just saw the highlights. They looked sweet, though. Terrifying. So sick. The way that Gaethje got knocked out was awesome. When you fall flat on your face like that, and you're that tough, that's crazy. <laughs> and unreal. you're the toughest guy in the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine knocking out the toughest guy in the world. How incredible that must feel. Fucking crazy. I've never been a UFC guy, and after watching those fights, I might be a UFC guy now. Yeah. The one of- bet I had all all <clears throat> all night was uh, over 1.5 rounds in the main event, and uh, the guy that got knocked out winning. So wow. both of those lofts within 30 seconds. Wait, it was over <laughs> 1.5 rounds. No, it wasn't. The final fight was like a half a round. Oh, I was I was talking the about the bad Holloway. motherfucker one, the, the, the Holloway fight. one. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I won. I got second place in the mini golf. Hell yeah, that was sweet. How was that? Ten thousand dollars. What? Jesus. Yeah, that's if good. It was that they, me. I'd be making sure my bros ate. Me too. Yeah, I don't have it yet. I'd be putting that <laughs> right back to the podcast. As soon as we get it, I'm gonna get a mic stand that doesn't. Have the mic constantly. It attack you. What you really should away. be doing is you should be investing in a new sign if you want your name up. No, we should be doing that for, for him. <laughs> he, imagine him having to pay for his. Own. <laughs> that kidding. one was around eleven thousand. So <laughs> after tax, you're still going to be putting up like five k on. No, that. they're going to do. You dirt. I, I wish it was just like a fucking stack of cash that you got from Dave, but it's yeah. going to be in your paycheck, and you're going to get like six. It's going to be like three thousand dollars. Come on, that's for real. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. Damn, no way, I'm get dude. An ESPN bet bonus money. bets. <laughs> what the heck? You get a bonus bet on horse racing and and some <laughs> barstool store cash. Yeah. <laughs> that that's a that was a fucking marathon of a of a there was four rounds there's a lot i feel like doing one round would have been fine <laughs> it was so intense i lost a couple pounds there too really yeah You're, are you stressing let's get you on some xanax yeah i'm not doing that well i'm really not doing well the, the first year that i worked here I'm, I'm, I'm still thinking about the the taxes the first year that i worked here my my, <clears throat> my bonus was five hundred dollars <laughs> And I literally thought it was a mistake. I thought they were like, oh, why did they – I was like, they must have just – why did they just give me 500 bucks like that? Like I didn't even – it never even registered to me that it was my bonus. I was That's like, why would they even give you a bonus? That's like a slap in the face, I honestly. don't know. I have no idea. Imagine what like Big Cat and PFT's bonuses oh, were. Yeah. Well, I think it was $1,000 and then it got taxed down to $500. Still. It's crazy. Mm. $500 is uh, that's something. That's nice. That's not. I mean, I'd take five hundred dollars right now. At but, the time, I was pumped. Yeah, it's just crazy that that what other people might be getting. But ten thousand. I mean, just get better at mini golf. You could get mm-hmm. a sweet ten thousand. What? Did well, Ryan I did w- come in third place in the first mini golf tournament. But, you did? Yeah, but then they, of course, they lost the scorecards and they put Kirk in third place instead. And then moved you. And then moved out you to twelfth place. <laughs> And then took you out of the rest of the tournament. Yes. They're like, you also will not be able to compete in the future. Yes. Going Damn. forward. 
That's too bad. Well, I knew it was going to happen when I finished in third place and there was not a single camera even pointed in my direction. And I was like, well, this that, didn't didn't, happen. that didn't the matter tree just at all. Fell in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Well, maybe next year you can get an invite. No, I got an invite this year, I think. Oh, did you? Yeah, I just didn't go. <laughs> Why? Because I couldn't. Why? Why not? I had stuff going on in New York. Son of so a boy did dad. I, but I went. Son of a boy dad. Yeah, you're yeah, son of a boy know. dad. Yeah. Yeah. We recorded while you were gone. Someone I, had to. I go where I am told to go. <laughs> I know. We have a different contract, though. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm fulfilling my contract right now. You're on the Taylor the Wand deal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which you have a reality show in Mexico that you're hosting I know, next I month. Am, That's yeah, going to be pretty huge. pumped. Been out in Mexico City a lot. <laughs> Who has been the sec- – who, who is uh, – who else was your competition in that? Marty – like didn't Marty like fuck up at the end so you could – like didn't you win a lot of money because Marty fucked up or something? Well, I, at that point I had pretty much sealed um, – I had – well – You sealed a tie I had, I had hit an, a hole in one on the, on the 17th hole. Huge. Which meant that in order for Marty to tie me, he had to hit a hole in one on the 18th hole. Got it. And he didn't. But then Riggs was behind me by a stroke, and he made a hole in one. And so now Marty just had to two putt on 18 for the tie with Riggs to push that to a playoff. But he three putted. And then he smashed his club into the set, yeah, which I think set. they were planning to use in future years. <laughs> now there's a hole in it. There's a hole in one. But I like that. I like people that act out. Yeah. Yeah. I like when things Spazzing. like when people are just like they can't even control their, you know, feelings, emotion. That lends stakes to the entire event. It was really intense. Also, it would have been a win for him beating you, Riggs, Frankie, Frankie, and Whit, Kirk. Dudes well, what, who play golf every fucking week. No one was yeah, going to be Whitney. All ass. Whitney was, Whitney is, um, <laughs> Whitney's good. Whitney is good. No one was, Whitney ran away with it. We were all f- vying for second. I would beat Whitney. That's probably why they didn't want me to get. Well, they, you guys should have the match. You know how they I'd have asked, like Tiger Woods I, against uh, Rory McIlroy, whatever the fuck it was. The Who Masters? Did, no, no, the match where it was just like one on one. Ah, I see. We do these grudge matches. The problem is that Sass, um, no I've, one would watch that because you're not good. No, I am. I am good. You trying to convince people Swing that you're like good butter. is one of the great strange delusions of this place if i played golf many. four times this week i could be most people in the office it's like me saying if i fly fished today tomorrow and the next day i would be better than brother you. i've seen you out on the, i've seen you out on the water and you i've need, seen you, you out on the you golf need, course you need a lot more than four days you need a lot more he than four days golf? no i'm great at golf he, i'm asking once Francis. upon a time there was a swing there now <laughs> It it is Parkinson'sy. <laughs> no, it's not. It's riddled. I'm great. I bet. I bet right now I'm probably the best I've ever been. Just because I just watched the Masters all week. <laughs> yeah, you, through osmosis you picked it up. It is crazy how delusional I am with golf. I watched the Masters and I was like, I bet if I went out here I could get like you 51 strokes yourself. I I, I was like in my head I was like. If I just had a good day, I could, I could compete. <laughs> if I didn't try to do anything super, yeah. if I didn't go at pins. Yeah. That's literally what I was if thinking. If I laid up when I needed to, if I had the right caddy and Dude, got, got, enough a, got a proper range yeah. session in and, and got the speed of the greens, I could probably It's, really it's literally exactly what I was thinking. I think I was, a lot of men I was like, I was like, if I just played smart golf, if I played bogey golf, if I went for bogeys, I think I could have a good round. I could have a good The map, problem a good is round. you just like, those guys are so good that they make Make the course look easy, and it's the hardest place ever. I know. There's a there's a there six hundred yard holes, par fives, par fours that are like that's just up and down yards. for Sass, though. That's up and down. That's a driver in a three wood. <laughs> <laughs> six hundred yards is light. Tiger really fell apart. But that's okay. He made the cut. That's all we wanted. We wanted to just watch him the whole time. Is it though? I think we wanted him to win. No. I know my DraftKings account sure did. <laughs> he's a little bit less exciting now that he's uh, just on the straight and narrow and has like a bad back. Shit yeah. is not interesting. They're all talking. They're always talking about his back and his fucking ankles. What? Retire. Spoken like a true young man. Exactly. 
he'll never age. No problem with these ankles. Let's see him. Give us a swirl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why was that so creaky? <laughs> that looked like it was in stop motion. <laughs> that looked like a Wallace and Gromit fucking claymation. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you get new pants? No, these are not new. Come on. I got these at L.L. Bean with you. You did? You bought those as well? You bought two pairs of pants that day? Trace. What the heck? Three pairs of pants. Let's be real. Cool, man. Good for you. Let your accountant know. <laughs> he'll know. Oh, he'll know. He'll call me and say, well, I wish you only bought two pairs of pants. I can't believe Would've accountants been a lot are allowed easier. to do that. The, those lying bastards. I know. Those subsidized bastards. The government is just fucking looking out for them. I know. They protect that profession like fucking realtors. How hard is it to do it yourself? Taxes? Like we, 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 when you have to write off stuff. Because right. I have the number that I have to write off and I have all my 1099s and I have my barstool paycheck. It's like I feel like I could just do it on TurboTax in like an hour. Oh, Probably TurboTax. Can. Yeah, that would be easy. Probably can. Turbo. I mean, they don't put the word turbo in there for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but my mom sent all my 1099s to this guy. So he has them. Well, then and just he's just that. like, I can't do it. So I'm like, well, what are we going to do now? Because you have all well, of I my guess information. fucking take me to jail. Yeah. Because I'm fucking cooked. Fucking lock me up and throw away the goddamn key. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any... Uh... Any sweet dinners out in Chicago with the Four Play Boys? Uh, I went out for drinks with Wit, Will Compton, oh and my Frankie. Oh, God. Both of that crew. Yeah. Dogs. That's a good crew. crew. That was a good squad. We actually started a group chat after. That's a good hang. Yeah. What That's is, a hang uh, you read about. What, so does Will Compton and Riggs not get along? No, I think they do. I don't know. Um, Dude, I thought you were Riggs, a, Riggs always has Frank stuff was. he has to do. He's always got stuff. Riggs? What the fuck does that mean? He's busy. He runs all the fucking Barcel Classics and organizes all that and the podcast. And, you know, it's the week of the, the masters. masters. So, like, they have to keep all on that. And, uh, while Frankie and everybody else <coughs> gets to go pound, pound beers. I guess we, we went out late. I don't know. I don't know where, what happened, how the group formed or whatever, but, um, that was the group and we went both nights and it was fun. I'm going out this uh, to Chicago this week and fucking next week. Jesus Christ. Ryan Whitney, I think, is the funniest person at the entire company. <laughs> I'm not even – I'm not – I would I would die on that hill. Was he it? told this story. <laughs> he told – I don't know if I could say it. I won't say it. Okay. Then let's say it. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you going to Chicago twice? The, first for this fucking uh, content draft thing or whatever. The and film the, festival? Yeah, the film festival. You're doing that? Well, I also have to be out there to shoot a fucking New Amsterdam commercial and record uh, some NBA playoff shit. Interesting. And then next week is the NFL draft, so I'm going out for, there for that, for the NFL draft show. Mm, they they canceled me from that as well. <laughs> no. You're supposed to be the Patriots guy. No, they said, do you want to be the Bills guy? And then Jake Bass texted me, and he was like, do you actually like the Bills? And I was like, not anymore. Why did you say that? It could have been us in Chicago with Frankie and Witt telling stories. Oh, fuck. It's a good squad. I didn't even think about that. God I mean, damn it. Will and I just sat around laughing at Whitney. That's all we did. Frankie's a good storyteller, too. Frankie's Sounds like really a good storyteller. Have you ever heard the Frankie story of doing his interview for the internship that led to him being the camera guy for Dave? Pizza reviews? I don't think so. Don't tell it. Don't tell it, though. It's amazing. Yeah. Let, hear it from him. No, no. I want you to tell it. We'll save that for another time. We should have Frankie on this show. We'll do that on the Patreon. We should have Frankie on this show. That would be great. Yeah, we should have Frankie on this show. Frankie's funny. Frankie's very funny. Yeah. We should have Whit on this show. We should have Whitney on this We've show. We've had him on, haven't we? <laughs> no. Yeah, we have. What? We had well, him on one of our first like episodes. One second. Yeah, they were on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They never come around anymore. No. <laughs> what? You should see him talk about like people we, you know, just people. People we know. He's like, buddy. I mean, some of these fucking people. <laughs> he's like, they don't do anything. <laughs> Says the dude who plays golf like ten days a fucking week. I know. I think Lazy if you're as successful as spitting chiclets, you can kind of make your own. I heard that podcast is kind of falling off. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I heard that they, that's why they have to start covering golf now. <laughs> they got to cover two things. I heard they're not on the rise like Son of a Boy Dad is, top podcast in New York City. <laughs> not not at Barstool. Full stop in New York City. All, new, all of New York. 
in all of New York City. Yeah. Move over. We're Red becoming scare. like like people are gonna come into town and be like, I gotta do I gotta do son of a boy that while I'm in town. Yeah. People are gonna come for this. Because that'll change my life. Like I'm doing son of a forever. boy dad, gut field. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the the tonight show and son of a boy dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do a tight five on Fallon and then head on over to HQ three. Whoever is at chop SNL this week. Yeah, that's what that literally is what Jelly Roll did. Jelly Roll was a real one for that. I know. Before my time. That was before your time. Before your time. All right. Let's talk about game time. Game time, the official ticketing partner of Barstool Sports. It's NBA playoff season, so you know that I'm smashing game time to get some last minute tickets for all of my favorite teams. Lowest price guaranteed. Lowest price guaranteed. I might go right across the street to Madison Square Garden. MSG. Nick's just knocked locked up the two seed. That's pretty amazing. Amazing. Joel just did his hundredth show there. Wow. Joel did? Yeah. The Piano Man himself. Yeah. That's right. If you want to go see Piano Man himself, hit up Game Time. You will. You could probably sit on the piano. You probably could lay across his Literally. lap, Literally. Or, or lay flat on the baby grand, the bed of the baby grand, and yeah. fucking kick your kick your legs while you gaze into the eyes of Billy Joel. Yeah. Hyperbole, but that's how good the tickets are. Don't forget to wear your long silk gloves and have a cigarette with one of those stems the and, cruella oh, de vil yes. the holder yes you know what i mean that's who i'm picturing is that lacy lanky woman yes just blowing rings who has like a little cr- like a diamond crown or yeah. something like that lounging across her fl- forlornly across billy joel's piano a flapper a yeah. woman from the 1920s come to life to use game time because she realized she was Stole the opportunity was robbed of her to use game time. Yeah, imagine being born in any other time where you didn't have game time in your life to get last minute tickets to go see Akash Singh. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, what are you waiting for? We are going to buy our NBA playoff tickets today at NBA, excuse me, at gametime.com, and you guys should too. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Down to, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code BOYDAD for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. You, yeah, shoot us a shoot us a screenshot of you using de- uh, code BOYDAD to get twenty bucks off, and one of the three of us will also send you twenty dollars. By the way, the URL is GameTime.co. <laughs> Excuse me, not GameTime.com. Still though, they get it. Bingo. But people just like us, us boys, though. That's the problem. I know. They just like it when we are just the three of us just fucking chopping it the fuck up. Just talking nonsense. Chopping it up, chopping it down. Chopping it up, chopping it down, chopping it, whatever. Mowing it down. Didn't you say you had some shit from this weekend? Didn't you say you had some fun stuff that you've been doing? Well, yeah. I mean, I went to uh, Detroit, Royal Oak, Michigan. Detroit. Royal Oak? Eight Mile? It's 12 mile oh was the sign i, I don't saw? understand how that shit works is it like the fucking blast radius it's a good question i don't know either i don't know i didn't ask those questions is it a latitudinal line bro detroit has a really good food scene the restaurants there are for real yes they do I've it's heard. incredible we went to an incredible restaurant called mabel gray yeah. Bartender saw us and he came out and he was like, What do you like to drink? And I was like, I don't know. The growny old fashioned. These types of things. You know, I like a Manhattan, but if there's and he's like he's like, Would you be interested in something a little more interesting? Can I kind of play? And I was like, please. Anytime go for a it. bartender wants to play, have at it. Have at it. <laughs> and he came out with this whiskey cocktail Ooh. that uh he goes, It's got chartreuse. Ooh. And uh, barrel aged bourbon, Ooh. and it's got mm. um, Demerara <laughs> syrup and mm. Cyanar, Chinar, which is like Chinar. This, yes, yeah. that's how Cleopatra died. <laughs> Too much of it will kill you. <laughs> uh, and all these things, and he goes, "It's every ingredient that I would drink when I would black out. Ooh. Put in one." He goes, "It's it's all gas, but I don't drink anymore." 
So it's like uh, But when I did These were the things A I Long drank. Island iced tea For the sophisticated man Yeah it's a yeah. Long Island iced tea But it's very balanced It was amazing He gave me I had him write down The recipe for me I've been starting to do this If I have a cocktail I really like at a, res- at a restaurant I have the bartender Write down the uh, Cocktail recipe for me And I've started to compile A few that I really like I wanted to do that this weekend Because I had a sublime cocktail I, I don't see any reason Why they wouldn't be Very flattered about it I, I think with chefs it's a little more like asking a magician to reveal how he did a trick. The but, answer is butter for chefs. Right. The answer is butter and salt every yeah. fucking time. But with cocktail, with with uh, bartenders, I think I think they like that. I think they're flattered. And he also wrote his name down. And he like had come up with a name for it. In fact, he called it the most dangerous game. That's what he called it. Really? Yeah, that's the name of the cocktail. I'll read you the ingredients. It was really delicious. Presented by Mattress Firm? <laughs> <laughs> Unjunk your sleep with this cocktail. <laughs> the so, secret ingredient: well, melatonin. <laughs> yeah. Get ready to unjunk your sleep after one drink of this. Six dashes of Angostura bitters, one and a half ounces of bourbon, a half ounce of Nola coffee liqueur, half ounce of Chinar. I think it's Chinar. Maybe it's Chinar. Half ounce of Chartreuse. Chinar. Half ounce of Kokai Americano China. and lemon oil around the rim. This is from Max Skullbora, I think his name. Mabel Gray, Hazel Park, Michigan. One of go the best see, restaurants Go I've see Max. Yeah. So go check out Max Park in area. Detroit, Oak Hill. Go see him. <laughs> 12 Mile. <laughs> Did they have a good, uh, what kind of food were you eating? What, what was the menu? Changes every Pork week. Chop? Changes every week. We, we got all kinds of stuff. Mm. It's sort of like one week it'll be sort of Japanese fusion, and then the next week it'll be French. They mix, mix it around. Chef is really lights out. Really? High, high praise. Can't you got to get back out there. Yeah. Stat. You think you're going to move to Detroit? You know, <laughs> I wondered about that. Every time I go to a city, I ask myself, could I live here? Yeah. Could I live here? What was the answer? I don't know that I could live in Detroit. No, Cheap it's not houses. very nice. You buy up a block. There's that old meme where it's the it's the, the, the house without this, the porch. And the caption is just can't have nothing in Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's still too dangerous. I mean, even the people that live there say we're not back yet. There's definitely parts of Detroit that aren't uh, that dangerous, though. <laughs> like people think. say that about New York and Chicago. They're like, oh, Dude. Chicago is unlivable. Detroit was one of the cities that I genuinely felt unsafe in, like walking to the club. I was going to a Rangers hockey game last Sunday. And uh, I got off the subway. I was with my wife and we came up the stairs and it was a sort of bent staircase straight and then up to the left. And sitting on the middle tier of stairs was a guy shooting a heroin needle into his arm. Interesting. I had to walk by it. I'd never seen it that before. Damn. Have you guys ever seen someone shooting up heroin? Oh, yeah. I have in Philly. They would do it outside the studio where we recorded. You could just look out the window and a guy would be shooting up and then like would drive off. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Driving yeah, off is so got to be an awesome funny. drive. Hey, feel free to cut me off. I'm <laughs> relaxed. Yeah, that's Alrighty, so time to hit the road. What do you think you listen to when you're on, the, when you're on a road trip on heroin? <laughs> I don't fucking Frank know. Frank Sinatra. Hey, yeah. You're probably not listening to like <laughs> Willie Nelson and Florence shit. Florence and the Machine. Yeah. Is it like I'm going up the country and I want to go? <laughs> you're just I'm nodding going off. The Road trip time. Um, it's got to be. Sometimes I feel like I don't have <laughs> yeah, a yeah, good one. Good one. Good one. That's music. By I was listening to that shit. That's this weekend. for heroin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn. So, uh, what'd you guys do? Did you did you, did you scold the guy? You walked walk by it. I don't know, man. That's I a very. I don't like needles in general. I would have grabbed it and finished them off. <laughs> Take it in, brother. Yeah. It's only uphill from here. Yeah. <laughs> Best you're going to feel all day. Need a friend? <laughs> <laughs> you got any more of that? Let me more? get that for you. <laughs> Splitsky? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's funny. It was it was a very stomach upsetting thing to witness. No, did you did you Maybe cover your wife's queasy. eyes like you were like a little kid watching a I movie didn't, with some horror. I we were going upstairs, and I wanted her to be able to navigate the stairs with full vision. 
Yeah, he's just taking medicine, honey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't, Don't worry, look, honey. Look at that poor diabetic over there. <laughs> <laughs> Insulin slow. Get him a Snicker. Yeah. He has to do that every day. <laughs> yeah. Every single day, he has look to. Look at do that. It. He's taking Ozempic. Yeah. He probably used to be fat. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that shit is nasty. Yeah. You see the? Yeah. I think it is getting worse, though. I will say that. New York. We or? always say that. We always say that. Ever since I moved here, we've been saying that. I don't know if it's just because I was walking around this week because it was nicer out, but I was like, the people, like the crackheads, were more annoying than they usually are. Well, they're like, and I think that's their problem. I don't care that they the do bees crack. In the spring. Yeah, they're just like, oh, it's fucking nice weather. Let's like exchange pollen and mm-hmm. fucking yeah. do crack. Mm-hmm. But no one's ever complaining about like the heroin addicts. No one ever like, well, the fucking heroin addicts are really pissing me off. It's yeah, the crackheads. Because heroin addicts mind their own Yeah, business. they're in their own fucking world. <laughs> yeah. And crackheads are just making their problem everyone else's problem. <laughs> Walking through Washington Square Park and they're just fucking in your face screaming at you. Yeah. And that you're could like, be, please fucking stop. That could be garden variety mental illness though. Well, it it's mental illness be. from smoking crack all your life. Or it's crack from smoking mental illness. Fuck. Which is the – it's the chicken or the egg, you know? Mm-hmm. That is true. You never know which one is the – but I don't – I mean – I mean these guys are fucking nuts. It's nice in Dumbo. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. It's nice on that dirt road yeah. that you guys have to get to your apartment. Well, we have a lot of tourists. Yeah. Which I don't So like. many people don't speak English. I'm like, we got to co- close this border wall. Yeah. yeah. All these people in Prada taking photos of the Manhattan Bridge. I'm like, these fucking migrants are out of control. Well, I'm surprised you guys don't have like a gate or something because you do have that like cobblestone street that you have to go down to get to your apartment. Yeah. It's fucking brutal. That's how you know it's a nice area. Cobblestone? Because the cobblestone. And, and they're they like freshly it putting it in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, redid, they did a whole project of restoring it. Yeah. It's fucking beautiful. You got to come hang out. You should come just walk and get get an ice cream cone or something. Yeah, yeah come I might. through. Have some ice cream with us. Yeah. Did I ever tell you there's that guy, There's that hot dog cart on the corner, the halal yeah. and hot dog cart? And I'm, I just think to myself, man, they must make so much money because this is such a tourist hotspot. And there's not prices on there, so they're just like, eh, yeah, fourteen dollars. But did I ever <laughs> did I ever tell you that when when I worked at the DA's office as a paralegal, one day I got to sit on uh, in on on like a, a pre trial pre uh, plea hearing. They used to call it Queen for a day. Yeah. Where the gay for a day? Yeah, sure. I used that joke already. Yeah, we've had this conversation before. Did I tell you though that this guy, not. this guy, this is not the one that defended himself. This guy came in and he had been racking up uh, violations for his hot dog stand, operating it without a proper license yeah. or certificate or whatever. And <laughs> over the course of two years of tickets, he owed the city. Seven hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars. Holy shit! <laughs> and he goes, "What am I going to do? <laughs> yeah. I sell hot dogs. <laughs> Seven hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars. That's I crazy. Sell hot One million dogs. four hundred thousand hot dogs. <laughs> I mean, that is like y- y- when you open up a hot dog stand. Your first thought is probably, "Well, it can't get any worse than this." <laughs> And then next thing you know, you owe the government $700,000. Because the, the fine is not – they don't apply it with any context. No. They're just like – it's the same as if like someone opened up a store on Fifth Avenue and started selling Nike t-shirts yeah, without yeah. a license or something like that. So, you know, he's getting it with these outrageous fines. And then he'll move his cart to another place in the city, get it there and so on. Damn. What did, what did, he, what did he do? Well, they were like, can you pay any of it? And he was like, I how sell much? I hot dogs. And they were like, like two fifty, fifteen thousand. <laughs> He's like, no. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I don't. I can't remember how that resolved, but I felt bad for him. You, that guy just should, has to change his identity. He, he just got to switch his first and his last name. <laughs> yeah, he it went to just, prison for life. It was just also <laughs> yeah. one of those things that was like. The guy that shot the cop is out, but <laughs> this guy's in jail for life. <laughs> The clearly the law was so out of touch with the reality, um, much like when you know those guys were getting life sentences for having three marijuana convictions or whatever. Yeah, many of whom, by the way, did you see that uh, Eric Adams was giving the first recreational marijuana licenses in New York to people that had been convicted of marijuana 
charges for prison time and stuff. That shit is interesting. Yeah. It's kind of cool. But did you see that guy that went on Joe Rogan? <clears throat> Uh, and he was brought on by this prison reform activist. Oh, yeah. And he spoke bad. for like four hours eloquently about how he was – there was this miscarriage of justice that – why he even wound up in jail. And then two weeks after he got out, he just killed somebody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't see that. He like brutally killed them too. He like <laughs> sawed their head off or some yeah. shit. That was rival. the day that Joe Rogan fired his booker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a gang rival. That – talk about – uh, cold revenge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I waited years and years, fooled everybody, got onto Rogan, and yeah. it's like, no, I'm still gonna kill you. <laughs> Damn, that shit is hilarious for the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm. Should have mm-hmm. just did heroin. Fucking minded his own goddamn business. I know, dude. So I went to Iceland this weekend. Oh my so god, it was fucking. Dude, but everybody, everybody's just comparing the trip to yours. Really? It, either they're either like. Sass did it better. Really? Sass was in this exact same spot or did it better. Or Sass could never fucking travel like this. I did, I did a lot of the stuff that you did up until like when you went out east. I, so I exclusively went east. I went directly east from... But you went to Vic. Yeah, Vic is east. No, Vic is south. Well, it's, it's east. It's east of Reykjavik. Everything is east. Reykjavik is on the far west coast. Yeah. So everything was going to Vic... That was like kind of central. Well, I guess it's, I yeah, but it's not east, east Iceland. Oh, it's east of where uh, whatever. Yeah, I went east. This is semantics. Um, <laughs> I, did, I did. I did the Black Sand Beach. I did Selfoss, and I did Vic. Yes. Yeah. Then I didn't do anything else that you did. That shit was sweet though. Yeah. Uh, the I, I ate reindeer. That shit was good, dude. I didn't know they fucking it's like a mortal sin. No, they eat ho- horses. Their third biggest thing that they eat there, I or, or as far as the meats, it's lamb, fish, and horse are the three biggest really? meats that they eat. I eat, I eat horse and I eat whale. <laughs> really? Yeah, whale steak. It's a mortal sin. They said it's they said it's quite good. <laughs> it's good. I thought horse was delicious. Yeah, zebra's really good. Tender. I had zebra this past year, and fucking that was delicious. It's the same shit, except for one's got stripes. Right. What uh, Are you allowed to eat zebra? I was in South Africa, bro. Oh, uh, yeah. I feel they like that's them. a big no-no. Why? No, anything goes over there. Also, zebra, when you go over there, you realize that zebra are not the ones we need to protect. There are a lot of them. There are so many. I'd and they're to fucking see a zebra. chatty. Yeah, they're really? annoying. <laughs> yeah, kill those fucking things. <laughs> they run their fucking gums. Dude. Yeah. They run their mouths at all times. It's fucking... But I couldn't find horse on any menu. Oh, the most rare thing I saw was this reindeer. I, it's crazy you ate. Was it good? Amazing. Tender? Mm. Amazing. Tender? Oh, I'm getting all juicy. Imagine... Oh, we got to go to Fort Charles and get some fucking reindeer. We got to see if they'll fucking import some reindeer for us. But they were... It's a very... uh, It's a very mythical land. We went on like a super Jeep tour the one day and uh, my wife asked the guy, he's like, I heard you guys believe in uh, elves. And he was like, I would never say elves don't exist. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He was like adamant. He's like, I would never say that they don't exist. And it's like a big part of their culture. They think that elves just live in the rocks. Like this is like a 65-year-old guy with a Jeff cap on. He's not like some hippy-dippy, long-haired, Icelandic, like Viking descendant. He's like well put together, spent time all over the world, very worldly. And he's like, I would never say they don't exist. Mm. They just – and they say you're not even supposed to throw a rock in Iceland because – they're could afraid be an that it, 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 or could it, it could elf. hit an elf. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> they're worried that it would hit an elf. <laughs> trying to think if I threw any rocks while I was there. Did you? I don't think so. Well, be sure. <laughs> I don't think I did. Because <laughs> your ass might not be welcome back. Think I don't think hard. I threw any rocks. <laughs> Imagine if you went through customs and they're like, we heard on your podcast yeah, that you, yeah, yeah. you threw an elf. Oh, threw it's a the rock. elf killer. <laughs> you killed an elf. But so how was it? Was it sick? The gulls looked awesome. I was, I was pounding gulls. Gulls are great. We had, yeah, we had some gulls on the black sand beach. It was fucking just it's been a nice vacation. You drank on the beach? Uh, there's like a little cafe there with like glass windows that was right Must be there. new. <laughs> what was that <laughs> snow situation? Yeah, I know. That's what I was curious about. That must it have just, been east. Well, they have the same saying. If that, I had to guess uh, that was east. They must have got. <laughs> they must have just gotten this saying because five different people said it to us. They're like, you know what they say in Iceland? If you don't like the weather, wait five minutes and it will change. Mm-hmm. It's like, bro, they have that saying in Chicago, <laughs> yeah, it's fucking in Los yeah. Angeles, yeah. Portland, Oregon. They say that shit everywhere. But we were driving through some tumultuous. Yeah, it looked crazy. Snowstorms just breaking down the Drake track, though. 
Really? I heard. I, I don't know if it was you or your wife that posted the story, but it yeah. was like you guys driving through the snow and then you could just hear the 808s like ringing in the back. And I was like, that's a hilarious music to be listening to right now. <laughs> in the snowstorm. <laughs> and I, we literally we listened to it like 12 times because she she wasn't comprehending how good it was. Yeah. So I had to fucking sit her ass down. And fucking, <laughs> I literally went bar for bar. <laughs> Then the Rick Ross one came out. She's like, break it down for me. Are you able to listen to that without looking at a lyric sort of deciphering table and know every reference that Drake is making? Pretty much. Wow. That's amazing. I pretty much knew. Or some of them, it took a second to think about it, but pretty much everything understood. I would say that I did not understand 94% of it. Well, really? have you been not been keeping up with like the Jake Cole and the Kendrick and all I that mean, stuff? I mean, I have a pretty surface level understanding of it all. Because I was keeping track of that. And then my friend Bo was like, sent me a thing and, I, and he didn't understand it. And then I sent him like a 20 paragraph with screenshot, like breakdown of it. And then he just never You replied. broke it down yourself? <laughs> I broke it. I broke down the J. Cole diss track to him and mm-hmm. he didn't understand any of it. And then he never even, I don't think he ever even read it. Bastard. I know. There's just you know, yeah. There's always a nerdy guy on like genius. Yeah, yeah. What Jay Cole meant here? I love doing. That. I love looking at those. It is interesting. I was going. I mean, it's way more interesting when you know it line by line. Yeah. And you didn't listen to the Drake one. I listened to like half of it. Why? Why not? I just thought it wasn't the real. Thing? Everyone was, was commenting awesome. and saying this is AI. No, that you would have been able to tell if it was AI. There's too much like nuance and like interesting writing in it, and he's like referencing things. I'll listen, I'll listen to it after this. Like you think some like fucking like rat fan who likes AI could just write up a verse that would be comparable to him? Because they tried to do that with Kendrick, saying that he had a response and it was fucking terrible. Yeah, I didn't. but at some point, if Drake just gets bored, he could either have AI do this or. He could get out of trouble by saying, I didn't say those things. AI did it. But I think that he, there's still a standard of writing. AI will just make his voice sound like that. Like the AI, For now, but it's getting better. Well, I didn't realize that the Meek Mill P. Diddy thing was AI. The, them fucking? <laughs> no, 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 not that. The one, the, the one where Meek Mill says, uh, I hope they forgive me for what I did with Diddy. Oh, but that's like just a, a sentence. This is this is like nuanced. This is poetry, yeah, but it bro. sounded exactly like him. But I'm but I'm saying that it's easy to write the text of that. Like AI is just is not writing the text. Someone's just plugging text into yeah, an AI, yeah, 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 yeah. and it's saying it similarly. That makes sense. There was a uh, you know how Iceland is ice, Greenland is green. Yeah, exactly. They, I feel like that's their whole uh, no, it's the, no, other it's the opposite, around. opposite, other way around. Yeah, yeah Greenland yeah. is all ice. Greenland's ice. But I feel like that like trickiness is how they uh, they just name everything like that. Like uh, we went to the Blue Lagoon. Yeah, and there's like a slushy drink, and the drink was literally called crap. Just K R A P, or there's like food called like salt scum, like just this disgusting shit. Or like everything is just supposed to be like shrouded in like secrecy, or like the coolest waterfalls will be called like hip that a move for the dog and it's yeah. like a tape on reverse. It's just a mythical, interesting, uh, interesting land. Did the money confuse you? No, I just swiped everything. Yeah. I didn't even take any money out. Yeah, because I and I, I had no idea how much I was spending until the very end of it. Yeah. Bad? No, not, not that bad. Not that bad. It's pretty expensive. I mean, I I was I spared no expense the entire time, and yeah. I I don't feel like I spent that much. It's not super fancy. Yeah, there's nothing. There's there, nothing crazy fancy. Over how was there. Hotel Vic? You didn't like it. I mean, the food was good. It didn't live up to your expectations. I mean, Francis will tell you. I'll 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 stay at some of the best hotels in the world, brother. Yeah, the Hotel the, Vic was beautiful. The Borgo San Andreas, beautiful. The fucking Amman. Did the did the shower the water smell like dog shit? Some of them did. Yeah, yeah. at the Hotel Rangel did. Yeah, yeah. So uh, sulfur. Yeah. So funny. Are you sure you stayed at the Hotel Vic? Positive. Really? Yeah, the one with all the glass. It doesn't sound like you. I don't know. I did. It was like four hundred dollars for one night. I feel like there were nicer hotels, though. How would you guys stay in the – like, there was just, like, two twin beds pushed together? No, we got a three-person bedroom. Really? There was one that was, like – I slept in, like, a cot pretty much, and then Bo and Matt shared a bed. Yeah, I don't know. I'd have to – I want to see a picture of it, of exactly where it was. Because I guess the lobby looked like it where you guys were smashing goals. Dude, there's only there, – there's, like, one hotel in Vic. There's a couple, dude. 
and one of them is called Hotel Vic. Okay. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> and that's the one that I stayed at. My main takeaway is that I'm just... That must have been, it must have been really nice. I need a tissue. The one that you, you stayed at? You need a tissue? No, you're good. My main takeaway is that I'm just like exhausting to travel with. Really? <laughs> I was just like, God bless my fucking wife because she it doesn't really bother her. But uh, I'm just, I could just tell that I'm like too much. Yeah. I'm just like, I can't do the Icelandic accent. So I'm still doing like the South African accent <laughs> from my last trip. <laughs> just driving around. She's like, I talk normal. I can't understand what you're saying. You were bringing, you were doing accents the whole time? I'm just too much, dude. I just know, <laughs> I just know that about myself because I'm just way too fucking much of a, per- like, I'm waking up, like putting on the clown makeup in the mirror as I prepare for another day to do like annoying jokes yeah. and like fucking like shitty fucking puns and fucking That's hilarious. cracking jokes for only her. Her enjoyment the entire day what was the what was your favorite thing that you did i mean there's just some beautiful like you you see waterfalls i don't want to say i saw too many waterfalls but there's just some beautiful i mean there's one where there's just a fucking rainbow in front of the waterfall. was that selfos selfos was the big one that i saw i Maybe. saw a couple but that was the best one by far was there like stairs next to it yeah there was yeah, the probably. stairs to go up and look there was there a rainbow up. in front of you yeah there was a rainbow at Selfos yeah. when you went? Yeah, it blew my mind. Yeah, that was the awesome. The fact that more people weren't having their mind blown. Yeah. It, I was like, what? Are you guys not fucking seeing what I'm seeing? Yeah. This shit made, yeah, I was coming. That story that you posted of the dude standing in front of the waterfall, was that you? With the crazy fit on? Yeah, yeah. That was you? Yeah. No, it wasn't. <laughs> no, it was some. But I saw that too. It was a photographer taking like pictures there yeah. or some shit. Dude, the, everyone that goes to that waterfall, they're all dressed in like, like they're about to fucking summit Everest. Yeah, and they all have like GoPros on. I thought that was you in that photo too. I wanted it to seem like it was me. Yeah, she didn't call me to the carpet on this. Well, it's just funny that they do that. Yeah, he was taking pictures. He was like a French guy, and he yeah. it had like a tour guide company on the back or something like that. But uh, he he like wouldn't let us like stand there because he was taking like a long exposure picture of himself doing the shit. It was pretty sweet though. It's just a beautiful country. Yeah, that is sick. I wish I had some fucking horse, though. I didn't see the Northern Lights either, or try horse or whale, so I got to go back. Yeah, it's tough to see the Northern Lights. I yeah. actually don't even know if I would ever really want to go during the season where the Northern Lights, where the, when the Northern Northern Lights happen. That's when it's the most packed, right? I don't know. I, well, it's just oh, they dark. They say summertime is the most Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, what am I saying? Northern I Lights is dark winter. constantly, yeah. 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 Summertime. That's when it has to be completely pitch black. Yeah, that shit is tough. Yeah. And they said summertime's a zoo. But yeah. that's when Justin Bieber filmed those music videos. Oh, really? My life is a movie. Yeah, no, I've you never saw that video? No. And everyone's watching. Didn't they shoot a bunch of Game of Thrones there, too? I At the Black did, Sand yes. Beaches, brother. That's right. Wow. Fuck. Beautiful geological formations. It really gives you a scope of how fucking, how we're not in charge of Mother Earth. Exactly. What do you think of the people there? Did you find them attractive? Me neither. Their I didn't faces find them are attractive square at all. Yeah, they're very. I thought I was in a game of Roblox, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh... are they were they nice or were they? What did you Block get? Did you people? Did did you did you get that thing that I was saying about when you walk into a restaurant and they're all silent? They didn't do that, but I, the only like pub pub I went to that wasn't like a restaurant, they fucking double charged us. Really? I like, got like a Capital One like notification that they double charge me and i try to go through capital one they're like well it's better if you call the fucking restaurant it's like dude they're in iceland how am i gonna yeah, call this yeah, puppy yeah. like you double yeah. charge me so i guess i don't know so people were like chatty not really chatty but i, I wasn't really trying to start up a, that many conversations yeah. i was just like i kind of had in mind what you said so i was more polite to people so they just had to fucking be nice to me mm. interesting they had no choice but to fucking be nice to me you but broke them down chatting up with strangers I wasn't chatting up with strangers either. But they were just nasty to you? No, they weren't nasty. They were just all super quiet. Yeah. Like I, I never think, heard I mean, they, them they having a conversation. There's, there's 300 days of rain there every year. Yeah. Oh they just God. have to be a sad people. Yeah. That's tough. That's what happened when I went to Hotel Vic. When I checked in, I was like, how's it going? And she was like, it'll get better. <laughs> and I was like, she's like, it's been rain. It's rained every single day for the last month. Really? Yeah. You had good weather. We had, yeah. It was like... One sunny day, one snowy day. Yeah. Did you guys read that short story when you were kids about that sort of society where it rains all the time and then after many, many years, the sun comes out for like an hour 
and there's one girl that grew up on earth or something where she had experienced sunshine but all the other kids had not and they bully her because they are jealous and they lock her in a closet Mm. and forget for that moment when the sun comes out and they all go out and see it and then they come back in and realize that they forgot to let her out what is the moral of that story i think it's a bullying thing don't bully the girl who saw a son yeah yes what the fuck is that story? Who it's would really write sad. that? I never forgot it. I've never heard that one. <clears throat> that had to be written by an Icelandic, bro. Definitely. Probably, yeah. Ireland's similar. At least the, Ir- the Irish like fucking get shit hammered. Yeah, they do. When but I was so in Iceland, I met Iceland, a bunch of people that don't they? No. A lot of people that I met in Iceland like live. They they moved there from Ireland. Really? Yeah. I mean, even in Vic, they were like Vic is. Uh, like a hundred years old as a town, it's tiny as fuck. Yeah, and it's close enough to a volcano that's like twice overdue. And the only wall that's keeping the fucking the glacier from melting is this like tiny little hill that they have no idea if it will protect its town. So like the whole town could get wiped out fully. Damn, which is fucking terrifying. So it's like I don't know why you live in most of these places. Yeah, but you could say the same thing about Tornado Alley. That's true. But I guess tor- but tornadoes are frequent. Like the fact that like one of these volcanoes could just explode. wipe some shit out. They don't explode like they do in the movies though, right? Where it's lava just shooting into the sky. They said you have a three hour – even if even if you miss all the like warning signs, you have three hours to get out of Dodge. But I think they do exp- – I mean shit does shit In Walter Mitty, they make it seem like it's a two-second yeah. gap. That scene, I remember that scene. Yeah, we went on some tours where we were like right under – like the base of some volcanoes that were like due to erupt. And I was fantasizing about having to, all of us to get out of there. It was us, an Italian family, a Chinese family, and like a lone Chinese guy. And just like – I was just wanted to – who would take on what roles if we were just fucking <laughs> out there in the wilderness? Sounds Who like would you'd we have to eat lead the first? Crew. I feel like I would. Yeah, the the strong white, the strong <laughs> well, the white Italian male. family had some strong whites. Nah. And the Ita- and You're the Chinese like, hey, guy, hey, hey, hey. I might have been eaten first, honestly. The Chinese guy would be like, "Rava. <laughs> it burn." <laughs> <laughs> just some casual racism to end the episode. <laughs> 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 Got to sprinkle it in at some point. Yeah, that was it. Was long overdue. A Chinese Icelandic guy. I, dude, I wish I could do the Icelandic accent though. I feel like I. I it's very it's difficult. Weird. It's just I, sounds. I should have fucking looked it up beforehand. Yeah, like I did in South Africa. So I, I was ready. <laughs> South Africa, I was prepared for it. But I was saying, dude, to him while you were gone, I'm just exhausting to travel with, dude. I like ran out of the Icelandic accent, so I was going back to the South African accent for my last trip. <laughs> it's so fucking much, dude. dude. I, I was just so, I just was just realizing to myself, like, I'm so over the top, dude. I'm exhausting. Even like I was texting Sass, like, yeah, just shit in the Blue Lagoon, just like making up lies. I was like, bro, I have to stop lying. Like, hey. I, I need to stop being a liar. I was like lying to my wife about I don't stuff. even know if I replied to that. Yeah, because you're just like, <laughs> all right. I was like, how is it? And he goes, I just shit in the pool of goo. And I was like, all right. <laughs> yeah, that's how I'm like I just, exhausting. I exhaust myself. I just took a shit <laughs> yeah. in the blue lagoon. <laughs> yeah, South African accent. <laughs> it's so funny, but it's just, uh, man, it's tough being me, bro. It's it tough is. tough living in this fucking hellscape of a head. Bored as hell, just making up lies to people dissatisfied with my own boredom and the sound of my own voice i'm jealous i want to go back to iceland well instead you guys are going to be montana boys i know it's so lame wyoming you know who the montana boys are no they're the dudes who just like line up and like mouth the lyrics of a song oh really and one of them's dating Kristen cavallari from laguna beach wow. damn they're nice. like 21 year old you don't know who the, the montana boys never heard of them i think they're, they're gonna be in the office this week yeah for Tommy. Cool. Um, all right. That's been Son of a Boy Dead. I want to be in New Brunswick this weekend. If you April don't cancel. 20th. One night. <laughs> I don't cancel. Where the fuck is New Brunswick? New Jersey. It's where Rutgers is. It's like an hour away. I'm gonna Tickets be, are selling well, actually. I'm going to be in Baltimore Ooh. at the port next weekend, April 25th to the 27th. Those will be gone. So tickets to francisellis.com. 
pop punk is going on tour please come see us the tickets are selling actually surprisingly well i just got a text message about them we're going to be in chicago columbus nashville dc philly uh chicago is in on may 31st come see that never had to plug anything before this is pretty fucking sweet it is it feels great. This is fucking incredible. Feels I feel great. like I'm Just having an it impact. Off your chest. Yeah. Like probably like that. Those words alone probably sold thousands, at least a hundred tickets. Big time. All right, thank you guys for listening. Goodbye.